Good afternoon. Coach, uh, yesterday, Hello, Eric. first you have an injury update on some of the guys from yesterday. Um, yes, so uh, Jonathan Harris, he's going to miss some time. He's going to miss some weeks with a knee. And then uh, Chase is going to miss a lot of time with a high ankle. Okay. Um, after the game, Justin was saying it's not about the stats necessarily. It's about the ability to make the game-changing plays at the end of the game. Wondering, do you talk with a team about that, and does that fit in with this kind of message of learning how to win, finishing these one-score games that you guys have had all year? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, with all these one-score games, it comes down to a couple plays. And uh, in that uh, time, it's about fundamentals. It's about uh, understanding the different things we're trying to accomplish. And uh, we have to be sound across the board, whether it's offense, defense, or special teams. And uh, we weren't last night, and that's how that game got away from us at the end there. Uh, Coach, two for you first. Are you changing anything around this week schedule-wise with Thanksgiving or anything? We are, yes. We're going to have uh, practice tomorrow and Wednesday so the guys can have their player day off on Thursday. I think it's important. You know, we talk a lot about family and getting people with their family, so we want to be sure they, they have that opportunity to be with their family on Thanksgiving. And I asked you last night, I don't know if any decisions have been made. Are you going to stick with Clint as a play caller this week? Yeah, that's how we're going to move forward right now. I thought the communication between Clint and Justin was really good. I thought the operation was really good and a couple things we can clean up, you know, with them that being their first time uh, going through it and uh, I think it'll be better the next. Regarding Melvin, what went into that decision and where do you go in terms of the running back room moving forward? Uh, with, with Melvin, you know, he's a guy that's a, he's a true pro. He's done a lot of good stuff uh, here at the Denver Broncos and scored some touchdowns for us this year. And we, we thought it was best f uh, for the team. And we've moved on. And I wish him the best of luck. And uh, I think it's a great for him to have a fresh start. And uh, But with the running backs, it'll be Marlon Mack. He'll be up. And then uh, Divine Zigbo. We're looking to see if we can get him up also, along with Latavius. Um, just to go back to the, the two-minute warning last night, what who was Russell primarily communicating with over the course of the break? And, and I think you mentioned it last night, but did you tell him specifically the clock needs to keep running here on that third and 10 play? Yeah, and that one there, I thought it was great communication across the board. We had time to go through it. We knew if we got a first down, we were going to win the game. Uh, so we wanted to uh, give ourselves a chance for that. And uh, we, we talked about it as a group. We talked about the different plays we potentially had there, uh, settled on one. And uh, you know, Russell wanted to make a play, and, and we had a chance for it, potentially. Um, we understood the situation, that we'd loved for that clock to be running. He knew that. We all knew that. And it uh, didn't work out that way. How was it for you personally to be the head coach without the play calling on your plate? Uh, you might hear my voice. I, I lost my voice a little bit. A lot of the time I didn't know what to, what to do. I was thought I should call a play, and uh, I realized I didn't have to actually hit the button on the side a couple times to try to talk to Russell and didn't have a button there. Um, but no, I, I, I really liked it. I, I thought it was fun to be part of a little bit more integral with the defense, uh, right there for each if we needed timeouts, penalties, all that stuff, and special teams offense, just being around the guys more, um, trying to get the crowd pumped up. They were amazing last night. I mean, they, they brought a lot of juice. I thought that was critical. And uh, so it, it was it was different, uh, something I'll have to get used to and get used to not touching the button. But uh, I thought it was really good. Nathaniel, I haven't seen uh, the pass rush impact the pass for the last two weeks like I had at earlier times in the season. Obviously, it's that since the trade of Bradley, Randy's still out, Barron missed a game there. How much do you feel like attrition is starting to really kind of impact that aspect of, uh, of the game? Uh, I mean, when it comes to the pass rush, we obviously, you know, we have to do better. Uh, and that starts with the coaches it's, and then the players and everybody. We got to get to the quarterback. We're always trying to find ways for that. I thought there were some really good pass situations that we did get some pressure on them. We, uh, Alex got that one sack. We backed him up. And then uh, I know uh, Josie had one. And uh, that's something we're always looking to try to generate pressure on the quarterback. Nate, I'm just curious. Even, even from the when you were introduced, you talked a lot about putting the ball downfield and chunk plays. Did, with your injuries and everything, how it's unfolded, do you think sometimes you're trying to take too big a bite, you and Russell, maybe? <laughs> you know, we always want to be aggressive. I think that's something that you're always looking to do, like we've talked about in the past. Um, the good thing about that is when you're going down the field, sometimes it'll – set up some good check downs. Uh, so I think it's, it's it, you get a little bit of both. You get good pass protection with the play pass action, and then you get an opportunity, hopefully, if you can get the ball down the field. And if not, you got a great check down. So those are things we're going to always continue to do. That's what we want to do. We want to try to get those explosive plays. We had a couple uh, last night, and we're always going to look for those. 
coach another up chapter in the Pat Sertan, Devontae Adams rivalry <laughs> that, that's going on. Do you think that can de develop into a rivalry, especially after the game Devontae Adams was caught saying that Pat's not there yet? What do you think of those comments and the rivalry that's building there? Yeah, Devontae uh, definitely likes to create uh, some uh, excitement there. Uh, and, and I think it's great. I think we're going to see a lot of great battles with those two guys. I think that's one great thing about him being in this division, um, that it's going to test Pat. Pat's going to test him. And uh, I'm excited to continually watch it. Uh, looking back at the, uh, at the block field goal there, what happened, kind of what caused uh, that to go askew? Um, you know, I wish we weren't kicking a field goal in that situation on that one. Um, but it's not just one person. Uh, ob obviously, we, we got to stay a little bit lower. We got to have better technique in that one there. And then uh, we got to get the kick up a little bit higher. So I think it's a combination of a lot of things that, that ended up getting it blocked. You, you talked um, last week about time management. And I'm curious now going forward with, with Clint calling the plays, how much does your week change? Like how much less time do you spend? with those guys in game planning or, or where do your resources and time go from there? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I think right now as we evaluate, you know, going into the game plan together, I think there, there's still going to be a lot of areas that I'll work in and uh, and I'll continually help develop that and be in the quarterback room, continually helping with that, but not having to be in there full time. Same thing with the group. Um, so it allowed me to kind of bounce around, do some other things when I was, uh, I was missing some things, whether it be meetings or other things come up. Um, so I think it'll free me up a little bit and also at the same time, I'll still be there to help those guys as much as possible. Do we have an update on Gregory? Is it possible he would be available this week? And then I have a follow-up. Oh, we're working through that. You know, he's day to day. I mean, from the standpoint of when we can activate him, we want to be sure we do it the right way and make sure that he comes back when he's ready. And are, is any thought of bringing competition in punter, given how much Corbis has kind of struggled to hear um, last three four games? Uh, you know, as of right now, we're gonna we evaluate everything, and we'll talk about that when we start talking about the personnel stuff. But um, Corliss has uh, done a good job, and he's had some other things happen, and we, we just got to be sure we keep working with him. I mean, he's a young guy that's that we want to keep getting experience. Nate, hey, this might this might be a question to ask you in a couple of weeks, but as you were talking about maybe missing some meetings here or there, your time management. Does part of you wish that you maybe would have made this switch to Clint a few weeks back or even earlier potentially? Um, you know, I think I, we were, I was evaluating it continually throughout, always trying to think how we can get better. And, uh, you know, I thought that Jacksonville game, some things really flowed well and, uh, we got in a rhythm. And then, you know, w when we were in the Tennessee game, I just, I, I didn't feel right. So I think that's why, uh, I really kind of put my foot down and decided to, to kind of move it over to Clint. And, um, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what Clint and Justin can put together and, and being part of that. And uh, I think it's a fresh look at everything. I thought it was great. Um, having somebody up in the box too, you know, when you're up in the box calling plays from there too, it, it's so different. It's quiet. It's uh, you don't have as many distractions. Um, you can see the whole field. You can help with calls. So uh, I think it'll give us advantage. So I'm excited for it now. Yeah, the ten no nothing lead. I think you've had three of them, two in a row, and uh, they've gotten away from you. How frustrating is that? And is there anything that you've seen from your team that uh, has been common in letting it? get away uh, I think in the end offense we got to score more points uh, I mean let's face it I, I mean we're not scoring enough points we got to do everything we can to get more touchdowns uh, across the board um, I mean the one thing I'll tell you about this team which is great to see is all these close games is because of how hard they're all playing I mean they're out there they're fighting nonstop, and uh, that's what I love about this group they're staying together they're fighting they're, they're doing everything they can to put our put so we can be in position to win the game. And that's something that's great to see. And we just now got to find a way to finish. I mean, it's, it's that simple. And um, making those key plays, because uh, in this league, those, those key plays completely can change the entire, uh, the entire game. So excited to see what we go with next. Let's go get a win.